the frame buffer is a video pixel generation core. So let's take a look at its pixel generation circuit part and then we'll add a wrapping circuit and plug it into the video subsystem. So frame buffer is of course a buffer, so it's actually just a memory module. So the whole design is going to be around using memory with a couple of ports, one for write and one for read. So keep that in mind while we actually discuss the details. First, I want to discuss a little bit about VRAM. I just want to create a little bit of a reminder in here. So we will try to utilize all internal FPGA memory. We're not going to use any anything external to the FPGA. And specifically, we will be using the VRAM macro cells. And we are currently using the Artix 7 family. Specifically, we're using the Nexus boards, which has, um, which we have a couple of options with. So uh, if you have the Nexus A7, you either have the 50T or you have the 100T. And some, uh, some people might have the Basis 3, which is um, a different board. It's a much smaller board. And it also follows, it's the same family. It's an Artix 7 family, but it has the 35T chip. So all of these devices within the family share a lot of common um, details with, uh, with inputs and outputs and capabilities. However, the logic capabilities or the differences between the devices uh, is usually between the logic, like logic uh, capabilities, for example, the number of logic cells, and of course, in the amount of internal memory it has and the amount of VRAM. So, for example, the um, Nexus A750T has 75 VRAMs macro cells as opposed to 135 that is contained in the 100T. So each one of these macro cells is 36 kilobits. However, out of these 36 kilobits, only 32 kilobits are data. The rest are actually used for parity bits, as a reminder. So the numbers you see in here tells you all, all of the uh, data, including parity and data. So what I did is I went ahead and I figured out, okay, how much total BRAMs in terms of bytes do we have on each one of these boards? And that's what you see in these numbers in here. So these numbers, the ones that are not highlighted, are actually the number of kilobits, basically. So if you multiply 50 times 36, you're going to get 1,800 kilobits for the basis 3. Um, that includes the parity bits. But if you actually remove the 4 kilobits that we have and you just basically multiply 32 kilobits by 50, you're going to get, and you divide it by 8, you're going to get how many kilobytes that is. It's 200 kilobytes. So these numbers tells me that the Nexus A7, the 100T, contains 540 kilobytes as opposed to 300 kilobytes that is contained in the 50T. And that's actually a major difference and it will, it will limit us a little bit. So let's take now a look at the details of how much memory do we need to, st to store and build that particular frame buffer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick to the VGA resolution and I'm going to compute the, uh, compute the number of bits and the number of bytes needed to store a full complete frame with all the pixels. So if you multiply 60, 640 by 480, you'll get about 307,200. And, it's, and, and I got this number here, I don't remember it, this actually I'm reading it from here, because the best case scenario, or basically the simplest case, is actually each one of these pixels is exactly one bit. So it's either dark or, or not dark, basically, just like a couple of colors, that's it. So if we decided that each pixel is one bit color, the number of bits necessary to store a complete frame of 640 by 480 pixels is going to be 307.2 or 307.2 kilobits. Of course, if you divide this by 8, you're going to get the number of bytes. So let's talk about bytes in here. So we need 38, uh, about 38 and a half kilobytes. So if you take a look at these numbers in here, I can definitely fit them in all of them. So that's easy. So we can store a full frame complete in any, in any of these three devices uh, because I have the memory to do that. However, when we're dealing with colors and VGA resolution, each pixel contains 12 bits four per um, or basically three bits oh well four bits per per color i have three colors three times four is 12. okay so if we compute basically we do the same we multiply 640 by 480 okay by 12 i get the total number of bits necessary that i need and that's basically the number total of bits if i divide it by eight i get how many kilobytes i need so take a look at here it's actually 460 obviously it's above the 52 capability at this point so i know that i can't store it and uh, you might think that, okay, we can store it in the Nexus 100T, and actually we can't, because out of these 540, we have 100 
and 28 kilobytes that are dedicated to the processor itself. When we instantiate it on a microblaze, we decided to give it the maximum memory we can, and it actually utilizes VRAM. So 128 kilobyte out of these 540 is there. So if you actually add 128 plus one, the 460, you're obviously above the 540 uh, 540 VRAM size that you have of usable data. Okay, so what's the solution? Well, the only solution is either using external memory, completely external to the board, so not using VRAM, or maybe changing these a little bit so that we can actually utilize the number of the logic cells as memory. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of a simpler approach. We're gonna decide um, that the colors are going to be nine bits, and then um, we'll convert these nine bits using a palette circuit um, to 12 bits. And the conversion is, as you will see shortly, is pretty straightforward. It's actually just, we're gonna take each color, we're gonna, we're gonna use three bits, then we take the most significant bits and we'll put it also as the least significant bit. So this is how we convert it. But anyway, for now, I'm just gonna tell you, we have three colors, each one of them will have three bits. So I need, need nine bits total. So if you compute that, you'll get about 300, you will need 346 kilobytes or so, plus the 128. You can fit them definitely in the, uh, in the 100T, but you still cannot, fit them even with this particular reduced resolution or redu reduced um, color depth you can't fit them in the 50t so that's a restriction on the 50t that the 100t does not have and just to note if you have the nexus ddr you actually have the 100t like the, the nexus i show you in my videos is actually um, the 100t chip okay so we're, we're going to adopt this and we're going to assume that you have the 100t and go from there so uh, well, this, this is just a table uh, repeated and our ultimate goal now is to start building that particular buffer and I need to know how much memory or how much data do I need in that buffer. We're gonna be utilizing VRAM so it has to be multiple too. So this is, this is the specs we need. We need exactly um, 640 by 480, okay, pixels. This is the total number of pixels we have. So if you take the log base two of that, you definitely need about 19 bits for the address. And that gives you two to the power 19 or this particular number of lines and each one of them will be nine bits. So what I'm telling you in here is you have about 307,000 lines and the word width is going to be nine bits here. That's how we need it. Okay, so that's fine. So this is one option for the buffer. However, it suffers a little bit of a problem. So if I took these two to the 19 lines that we have, okay, and I multiply it by nine to compute, this is the total number of bits available if I actually take this particular buffer and I use it. However, what we have is we have this particular number of bits that I actually need to store that. If I take the difference between them, I know that how many bits I need, and then I divide it by eight, I'll figure out how many bytes. So technically we have 240, let's say it's 245 kilobyte of memory wasted. This is how much I have if I use two to the power 19 because the log base two, it's 18.22. So I have to go a little bit higher. So there's a little bit at the very end that we do not use. This is basically wasted space. And that wasted space is actually 244 kilobyte. That is massive compared to the available data we have. Remember the available data we have total is 540. So what I'm telling you is a little bit, a little bit less than half is just wasted. So I can't afford that. So I need to fix this particular problem. And the solution is to do the following. Uh, instead of using just one VRAM or one particular buffer, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split that buffer into one big and one small buffer. Uh, two different sizes. So here's the solution we're going to adopt. So the solution we're going to adopt is we're going to take um, the 19 bit address is still 19 bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the most significant bit, which is bit number 18. And I'm going to say, okay, based on the value of that, I'll either use the upper RAM or the lower RAM. The upper RAM, I'm going to give it two to the power 18 lines, as opposed to the lower RAM, I'm going to give it two to the power 16 RAMs. And each one of them will have a data width of nine bits in each. If you think about it, this is basically a much larger RAM or not much. It's just a larger RAM and this is just smaller. And that saves me a little bit of wasted data. So if you compute the number of wasted data or number of wasted bits we have, I'm going to take 2 to the power 18. I'm going to add it to 2 to the, two to the power 16. Multiply it by 9 to figure out the total number of bits. I'll divide it by 8 to figure out the number of bytes available. So in kilobytes, that's basically 368. Okay, it's still more than what I need but it's definitely better than wasting 244 kilobytes like we did in here. So the amount of wasted space or wasted memory is much, much lower now. 
Okay, so this is what we'll do um, in terms of buffers. So the main design that we have is here, actually. That's that's pretty much it. I'll actually just take one of these templates that we have for the BRAM. It's going to be a dual port BRAM or a dual port RAM, and I'm going to do the same thing in here, and I'm just going to basically construct them together. Okay, so now next, I want to talk a little bit about addressing and what happens with the address translation. So we have seen before that in order for us to get access um, to, to certain pixel, we know that a RAM module actually contains a few lines. So each one of them is actually an exact pixel. However, originally we have a frame that has a bunch of pixels. So each one of these pixels somehow gets mapped in here and the mapping appears with the, with the row measure method which is basically you contain like you figure out it's y you multiply by the size h of s and then you add an x or something like that and then you get that particular address however we saw it's a little bit more efficient so that we don't use multiplication if we actually just do concatenation now when we did the concatenation that only can be used if the size is basically the x's or the y's are actually a multiples of two Okay, and when they were not multiples of two, what we did is we basically just expanded it and that's what you see here in blue. So, in, in we talked a little bit about this in the Sprite um, module when we talked about Sprite Video Core. And we said, well, if the Sprite is not, like the size of the Sprite is not a multiple of two, we just expanded a little bit in the X direction, in the Y direction. And that's fine. Uh, what's happening is you're, you're using a little bit of extra memory, you're filling it with a chroma key here and here and here. However, we, it's okay. It's like, that's fine. And the reason why it was okay is because the sprite was very small. Now, if you do take the same exact situation and you just expand it to the whole frame counter, of course, you're going to go from 640 by 480. So this is 480. You're going to have to go all the way to probably 512. That's what I'm thinking. And this one here is 640. I think you have to go for, for, to 1024. Of course, that 512 will actually be the total 512. Okay. So what's happening in here is now the amount of wasted space is a lot larger in a larger screen. So this is not good because we don't have a lot of memory. So we need to actually figure out a better way to do it. And as it turns out, we can't use this concatenation method as is. We're going to have to use that equation. And the equation that we've seen is actually tells me that the address you need is actually take the X and the Y of the pixel. Of course, you multiply the Y value by the horizontal size. That's basically the size of here, the maximum number of X, which in that particular case, I believe it's 480 for us. Okay. Uh, 480. Yes, 480. Actually, that's a 640. Yeah, I think I flipped them in here and, and that's obvious from the size. So let me just do that in here. So what we have is let me just correct this here. We have 640 here and that's basically the 480. And then of course, we expand this to 1024 and we expand this here to 512. Anyway, you get the idea. We can't do this, so we have to get the 640 in here, okay? The 640. Anyway, you get that, and that's how you get the address. You figure out the X, the Y, and multiply it by the 640, and you get it. However, if you take a look at the 640, you can technically write it as 128 plus 512. This is actually really important because both of these numbers are multiples of 2. I'm going to distribute the Ys in here, and that's about it. So the Y gets multiplied by 512, the Y gets multiplied by 128, and then we add the X to it. However, multiplying by 512, which is a multiple of 2, is just basically shifting. That's what we've seen before. Because this is 2 to the power 9, this is 2 to the power 7. So you're shifting y by 9 and you're shifting y by 7 in here. So last, basically, to get the address, all you have to do is just take the value of y, shift it by 9, uh, take the value of y, shift it by 7, and then add this number, this number, and that number. And that code in here implements this particular addressing scheme. What we gained from going from here to here is actually we got rid of this particular multiplication because multiplication in hardware is pretty expensive. It actually takes us a long time, especially if you have a lot of bits. The Y and the X's are probably nine bits or something like that. It's actually a really large um, multiplier. So by just taking these this approach, we have saved the, us a little bit of multiplication and a little bit of hardware so that becomes a little bit easier. Okay, so let's put everything together. You're going to see this in the code shortly, but this is how we compute that address. And let's put all of this together in a single design. So the design we're going to see is the following. It is actually implementing the buffer, and the buffer actually contains a couple of memory modules, one in here and one in here. Of course, they're going to have to be um, accessed for the right port allows the CPU to write into them. And the way we're going to do it is using the FPro bus. So we're going to specify an address. We're going to specify the data we want to write and then write enable. And the address in the CPU side will be computed not by this, well, using this equation in here, but we're going to do it on the driver side. 
On the other hand, which is the read pipe in here, which is basically the one that we feed to the pixel pixel stream, what we'll have, we'll have a couple of circuits. One is an address translation, the other one is a palette circuit. So the address translation does exactly what we did in here. It basically can implement this particular line of code in here. It just takes the X and the Y, it shifts the Y by nine and shift it by seven and then add all the three numbers and tells me this is the address I wanna read. Please give me that data. It gives it that data, but that data, it's actually nine bits because remember that like we have adopted a little bit of a smaller color, color depth to accommodate the amount of memory we can utilize. So because of that is only nine, we need a palette circuit because our VGA pixel stream is expecting 12 bits. So that palette circuit here will just, you're gonna see the implementation is pretty straightforward. So you will have um, one, two, and three for a single color, one, two, three for another color, one, two, three for a third color. What we'll do is we'll take the most significant bit in here, okay, and we'll just basically replicate that value, make it four. That's how that particular palette circuit is going to do. So we're gonna make this value in here, we're gonna copy this value in here, we're gonna copy this value in here and we create that 12. This is just arbitrary but I mean there are many ways to do it but this uh, this works. So now let's take a look at all the code that actually implements this particular circuit. So we'll go into Vivado in here. We'll see that uh, what we have I'm going to start with the palette circuit. So the palette circuit is this one here. So the palette circuit as I just explained it takes a 9 bit in and, and 12 bits out. And what it does, it basically splits the 9-bit into uh, R, G, B, N, and then it just replicates them. So it takes the R, N, and then it takes the most significant bit and just replicate it like I explained in here, short, like shortly, um, a few seconds ago. And then it just concatenates all these signals and just helps them. So that's how we implement the palette circuits. It's pretty straightforward. Now, what we're going to talk th talk about a little bit is actually uh, the memory module that we use internally in here. So we need a couple of them. So, for example, we need one with 320k. I mean, it says 320k, but uh, you get the idea. It's uh, well, let me just do this. So actually, we're using that particular memory. So this particular file it shows me the whole implementation. And if you take a look at the whole implementation, we know it consists of a couple of things here. Let me just do that. It consists of a RAM and another RAM. And that's what you see. You see a couple of instantiated RAMs with a little bit of different sizes. So one will take you the address width is 18. This is that. And the other one, the address width is going to be 16, which is this one in here. And just connect these signals. And of course, based on the pixel value of like basic, based on the address bit number 18, which is in here, I'll test it. I'll figure out whether I should be right, reading from the smaller one or the upper one. That's basically how we distinguish between them. And that's what we do. And of course, uh, we do we do this here like with some sort of an enable. So the, each one of them will have a right enable signal and we just utilize them. So that's the implementation. So the total implementation in here, let's take a look at the input and output. It takes, of course, a clock and a right enable. It just the read address and the right address and you get the read address and the right address um, by connecting them directly in here and that's what it is so now each one of these is actually a synchronous read write port okay so if you take a look at this code this we have seen before we've we've utilized this in the sprite ram as well it just follows uh, the template so that we can utilize brm and we have a couple of them that are exactly the same now we go back to this particular implementation, the whole circuit. So what we need to do is we have created this guy in here. We have created this guy in here. All we have to do is just put all of them together. And this is um, implemented in the frame um, source in here. This is the total pixel generation circuit, all of it, not wrapped yet. Okay, so let's take a quick look at it. What it does, it takes a VGA RAM, which is particularly this one in here. It takes a frame palette, okay, which is this particular one in here. And then it takes that addressing translation, which we've seen in here. This is the same exact line of code that we've seen right here. Okay. And then that's pretty much it. So everything is just straightforward connecting to every, uh, every line. Now at the very end in here, we have a little bit of a, um, a delay in here. So let me just talk briefly about it. So what this does, especially this particular one in here, it does the following. I know that I have an X and a Y. And I know that it'll take me one clock cycles to generate an output. And of course, the palette circuit is a combination circuit. So it's almost instantaneously that we get it. Like there's a little bit of delay, but it doesn't take a whole clock cycle. So from the time that this particular module gets its X and Y to the time that it generates an output, it's one clock cycle, which doesn't conform with the rest of the video course we have. We have decided that we need a couple of clock cycle delays. So what we do is we artificially just take that particular output in here and we'll pass it through a register so that we delay it a little bit. And that's the pixel generation circuit part.